God has been very good to all of us. He's been and been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He woke us up this morning. Yes, yes he, did. he did. And he breathed the breath of life into these old feeble bodies well. yeah. that are made out of clay. Mm. The Lord allowed for us all to wake up clothed in our right mind. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And the use of all of our limbs, well, now, my limbs don't work as good as they used to. Amen. <laughs> But he does allow for us to just live, move, and have our being. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Aren't you glad about that today? Amen. 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 That God has given more to us than what we acknowledge or recognize. Yeah. Even the very air that we breathe. Yeah. We would not even have air, nor would we be able to breathe it yeah. if it was not for the Lord. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. Now... I do have uh, a word for you this morning. There's a word for all of us. And I would ask if you will mark your Bibles uh, in the uh, 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And also in 2 Corinthians in the 4th chapter, beginning at the 3rd verse. So we'll start with uh, Matthew uh, 11. And then if you would just mark your Bibles to 2 Corinthians uh, 4, then we'll go there next. In the Gospel of Matthew, in the 11th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse, it reads, uh, let me start at the 20th verse, and it says, Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Jerusalem, and woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, mm -hmm. they would have repented long ago mm -hmm. All right. in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou has hid these things from the wise and prudent. And has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it so, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3, it says, But if our gospel be hid, mm -hmm. All right. it is hid to them that are lost, mm. in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds right. of them, which believe not less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, well. who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, <laughs> but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God mm -hmm. and not of us. Mm. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and have revealed them unto babies. I'll be preaching this morning from the subject. Where is your Wakanda? <laughs> and 
and who is your king? All right. All right. All right. All right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you, Lord, we love you, we adore you, Lord, we ask you now, Lord, to have thine own way. For you're the potter, and we are the clay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Where is your Wakanda? And who is your king? In Matthew 11, in our text, we find the Lord Jesus Christ giving a strong rebuke to the cities of Therese and Bethsaida and Capernaum because he had done mighty works in each city so much so that the people were able to get a first-hand glimpse of the power of God operating through the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, in our text in verse 20, it tells us that most of the work that the Lord Jesus Christ did was done in those three cities. It says, then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done. However, listen, the people did not repent because of Christ had what had Christ had done for them or embrace what was being done in them and as a result ultimately they would have to account for their lack of response to the great works that had been done in their midst mm-hmm. at the same time what they did not realize is that in comparison Christ knew that what had been done had he done the same works in other cities, those other cities would have taken full advantage of the works by surrendering, repenting, and ultimately uh, sharing what had been done, and they would not have been destroyed. In verse 21, it says, Woe unto thee, Cherazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works in Tyre, uh, which were done in you, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented a long time ago. At the same time, you see, you see, we find in verse 22, it says, But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained. Sodom and Gomorrah would still be here today. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Don't get scared. We just land the foundation because it is extremely important to God that we would all recognize what God has done for us through Jesus Christ and the mighty works which he has wrought in the world and through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in us. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ was informing the people that they had an opportunity to receive and then make an everlasting impact in the lives of other people just simply by repenting and being a witness Mm -hmm. to the mighty works that Christ had done in them. However, because they did not, they themselves would be judged by Christ because of their lack of willingness to share the gift of miracles of Christ that was done in them with others. In a strange way, what happened in Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum seems very similar to what happened in the fictional country of Wakanda, which is the country that the Black Panther was from. Well, I don't know how many of you all have seen the movie yet. I won't spoil it. Amen. Amen. But in the movie, listen, Wakanda was a landlocked East African country that had been struck by a meteor which unearthed a precious metal called vibranium, which was the most precious metal in all the earth because it had the power to heal and had the ability to develop technology in ways that were far more advanced than any other country in Africa and in more advanced than any other country in the world. In other words, Wakanda 
was the richest, most technologically advanced country in the world. However, there was a fault with Wakanda. Well. Because Wakanda was not willing to share the riches with the rest of Africa. Well. And they kept their riches hid from the rest of the world because they were afraid that they too would be invaded, conquered, divided, and colonized like the rest of Africa, which at one point in time was also rich in precious metals and in precious stones. Well. Now listen to me today. <clears throat> Even though Wakanda is a fictitious a country in a movie, the plight of Africa and African countries and the entire diaspora of Africa is a very real phenomenon. For example, African countries were invaded, conquered, divided, and colonized so that European countries could come and take control of their natural resources such as gold, uh -huh. iron, uh -huh. uranium, which is used for nuclear reactors, <laughs> copper, which is, which is a conductor for electricity. In other words, we would not have TVs, radios, heaters, air conditioners, and all the other things that are uh, operated and conducted by the copper that uh, conducts the electricity from one point to the other. Well. Also found in uh, the earth in Mother Africa was bauxite, which is a mineral source of aluminum. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's about you good church folks, but every now and again we have a good chicken dinner. <laughs> and those good chicken dinners at the end of the dinner, if you don't eat it all, you gotta wrap it up in some aluminum foil. Where would the church be without aluminum foil? Yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> in Africa also was tantalum, which is used for cell phone technology. Yeah computer hard drives, mm -hmm. and gaming devices. So we would not be able to play Xbox 2, 3, 4, 5, or whatever it is. And we would not be able to use our cell phones and be able to stream through the internet. We would not be able to do what we do with technology. I would be willing to bet you that just about everybody in here got a cell phone. What? Am I right about it? Amen. No. <laughs> Somebody get that young man a cell phone. <laughs> Silver. Oil. Cocoa beans. And precious stones such as rubies, diamonds, sapphires, and emeralds were taken out of the earth from Mother Africa. That's right. Most of what we use today in technology mm -hmm. and just about all the jewelry we got on right now mm -hmm. came from Africa. Mm -hmm. yes, Therefore, I am asked and forced to ask the question, what if? What if European countries had not colonized Africa? What if African nations would have stuck together and not allowed the continent of Africa to be pillaged and plunged by foreign invaders? Mm. What if the transatlantic slave trade did not happen? Well, we'll never know the answer to any of those questions. Yeah. However, it is not hard for any of us to use our deductive reasoning to conclude that most likely the continent of Africa would not be in the shambles that it is in had it not been conquered and divided and colonized by foreign oh, invaders, amen? Oh, yeah. Can I preach for a little while today? Yeah. Nevertheless, I digress because, listen, because in the movie, Wakanda did not want to share its wealth with the rest of Africa, and as a result, those around them were left to suffer hardships and poverty while Wakanda remained a rich nation unto itself mm -hmm. that enjoyed the best of everything. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, on one hand, one might say, what is so wrong with that? Wakanda had all that they needed, and it was up to everybody else to get what they needed. Amen? All right. 
Well, if that's what you're thinking, I stop by here today to pleasantly let you know that you're wrong. All right, all right. It's wrong because the people of Wakanda were blessed with a great gift, but that gift was given to them not so that they could have the best of everything, come on, come on now, come but on. so that they could share that gift yeah, yeah, yeah. that was given to them with others. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we know that this principle is very important to God because we've seen that in our text. Yes, sir. Where the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 21 on, says, Woe this. unto thee, for uh -huh. if the mighty works which were done in you That's had been see. done in uh -huh. and Sodom, uh -huh. they would have repented a long yeah, time yeah. ago yeah, in yeah, sackcloth yeah, yeah. and ashes. Church, I find it very right, interesting right together, that in our text, after the Lord Jesus Christ got finished uh, uh, saying what he said about uh, how important it was for those who had been blessed with the presence of God to share that with others, mm. he then went into prayer. Uh -huh. In our text, it says, uh, in verse 25, it says, at that time... Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, right. Lord of heaven and That's earth, right. because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Yeah, yeah. In other words, he was praying that, uh, that he wanted that those mighty supernatural works that had been done throughout the course of his in earthly ministry, that they be hid from those who were not going to share those things uh, with other people. For those who are wise in their own eyes and for those that, uh, hallelujah, he wanted to reveal those things to those who surrendered and were humbled with the childlike faith. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ wants those of us who are willing to, to go on. forth into the highways and byways and to compel those who yes, are sir. sick and shut in and those who are so, uh, yes, so drastically confused and all of those that we talk about and walk past and think about or yeah, yeah. not think about but uh -huh. look at and sometimes scoff at mm -hmm. and say, oh, I don't know how they got there, uh -huh. but I'm glad I'm not there. Mm -hmm. But let me just say to you right now, on, had it not been for the Lord, Come that could have been you, say that so. could have been me, say and so. maybe for yes, some of us that were you, been. that were me, maybe we were there, could maybe we were to experience a type of Wakanda deep down in our soul. Yeah. In other words, through surrender, repentance, with a childlike faith, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to reveal the mighty works through the power of God, yeah. which are delivered when we establish a deeper relationship with him. In verse 27 of our text, it says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Uh -huh. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father. Save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. I want you to know today that God wants to reveal himself to you. That God wants you to know him. 
Deep down in your souls, where every day, whether or not you're living in, uh, in Northwest or whether or not you're living in Southeast or whether or not you're living in between here or there or maybe you're not living uh, where you want to live. But I want to let you know that when we enter into a deeper relationship with him, when he reveals the fullness of who he is in us, it doesn't matter where we live, and it doesn't matter what that's we've got going it. on in our lives. Every day can be like Wakanda with him. Now listen, listen, listen. Let's look a little bit deeper in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. It says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels, right that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What that means is that we have mighty and powerful supernatural riches dwelling on the inside of us and those riches are intended to make a lasting impact on all the world around us. Amen. God has given us the fullness of his presence so that each and every one of us, no matter what walk of life we come from, he has empowered us so that we can go into all the world Amen. and to turn this world upside right. Yes, because surely where we are right now is that the world is upside down. That's right. So God has given us the power and the riches, the earth and the treasure in these earthen vessels that is dwelling in us. But it is up to us to discover and then uncover the riches so that we can then share them with others. Amen. Amen. Like Wakanda. Here are some of the supernatural riches that we have in these earthen vessels. Go ahead, go ahead. In Romans 9 and 23, it says that he, God, might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had aforetime prepared unto his glory. Now, what that means is that as Christians, we are vessels of God's mercy. All right. In other All words, right. God has taken pity on us. God has given us his favor. Yes, he has. Now listen, had it not been God for God's grace and his mercy, where would you be? Amen. Well, well. Each and well. every day I thank God that God's mercies are new every morning. Amen. Amen. That great is his yes, faithfulness. And, and I thank God that, that his mercies, that they fail not. That God is uh, loving and that he is uh, long-suffering towards me. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I thank God and that you are also a, a vessel of mercy because, listen, God was patient with us and loved us so much that he called us out of our spiritual deadness and our sinful darkness because God's grace and his mercy was long-suffering towards us. Thank you. Thank you. How long did you, you make God wait? Amen. <laughs> How long do we still try God? And how often do we still try God? And, and how much do we do we push God to the limit? Well, it doesn't matter how far or how much, or how much we uh, press God. Somehow, God's long-suffering and his love Thank towards you. us is uh, it's, uh, from everlasting Thank to everlasting. You, you see, God he pities us like a father pities his children. His mercy is as far as the east is from the west and as far as the heavens are from the earth. You see, we've got a God who... Who, uh, who, who, who knows the, that our frames are like the dust, amen. He knows that we are subject to fall, but I thank God for the word of God which says that though we may fall, he will not utterly cast us down, but he will hold us up with his hands. Aren't you glad today that you got a God that will hold you up even when you've fallen, even when you've tripped and stumbled and fall? Uh, we still got a God who loves us so much where he doesn't cast us down to the ground, but instead we've got a God who picks us up presses us off, and then loves us on, uh, on towards our journey so that we can go forth and do and be who God has called us to be before the foundation of the world itself was formed. If you are, are thankful this morning, if you are, are glad about that this morning, then I did up a day to just go right ahead on and say amen. Amen. Now, now, listen, listen. Now, with God's mercy... We have been filled with God's riches, mm -hmm. riches of his glory, which is the riches of God's presence operating in our souls. And it manifests itself in the form of God's love, God's grace and mercy, God's wisdom, power, faithfulness, justice, and his holiness. All of these things, listen, all of these things are more valuable than silver and gold. Yeah, that's right. Therefore, what we have inside of us 
is more valuable than all of the vibranium found in Wakanda, well. or even all of the natural resources found in Africa. Therefore, let me just say, a type of Wakanda is in you, but it's more powerful and it's more uh, impactful than anything else. All right, all right. It is in all of us who are willing to accept and not reject the mighty works of the riches of God's glory that have been made known to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. At the same time, once we realize that we do have riches living on the inside of us, that we do have God's glory dwelling in us, that we should not, that we should not hide it. Instead, we must be willing to share it with others. In 2 Corinthians 3, 4, verses 3, it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, Amen. should shine unto them. Listen, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, who and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, uh -huh. has shined in our hearts yes, to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, God is saying to us that if we hide the riches and if we're not willing to share the riches to those who are in the world, then those who are in the world will continue to be lost. They'll continue to be right. uh, busted and disgusted That's and confused. Right. They'll continue to be evil That's and right. wicked and, and continue to, to move in the wrong direction That's when right. we see a, a degradation and a downward spiral of, a, of, of the fabric of society uh, uh, unraveling right before our very eyes. We yeah. see, if, you're, if we're not careful, we will see a destruction. I don't know about you, but back in the day, there used to be a group called pa, uh, 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 Power in, in, Enemy Number One uh, in uh, Hallelujah, where he said you're, you're headed to self-destruction. Amen. So we are headed for self-destruction. Right. Right. Self-destruction if we, hallelujah, do not uh, uh, turn our lives That's around and, and get right. serious about the, the calling for which That's God right. has called us to, which is to go forth into all the highways and, and byways right. and to compel them who are lost to come in, to come into amen. his house. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to watch you say amen today. Amen. Listen, amen. Listen, listen, listen. listen, listen. We do not want to be seen in the same way as Therese and Bethsaida and Capernaum. And if we are, then listen, we may have to answer to Christ for not repenting, not receiving, and not sharing the mighty works that God has wrought in us. Even more, we have a responsibility to let the world know about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings. And he is the Lord of Lords. And he has made it possible for anyone who comes to him to receive help for their weary souls. In Matthew 11, it says, he said, uh, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your weary souls. Yes, yes, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, if you are standing right outside of Wakanda, and if you are tired of not experiencing the fullness of the power of God, if you have not yet uncovered and discovered the riches of God's glory that God wants to give to you, if you are uh, waking up every day and uh, just living, hallelujah, you are existing but not living, if you, hallelujah, are at the end of your rope, uh -huh. if you feel like, hallelujah, you have already come to the end of your journey, if you're at a place where you just don't know that anybody cares about you or loves come on, you, come on. if you believe somewhere, somehow, that, uh, that, uh, that, that God has forsaken you, but I want, I want to let you know right on, now Jesus. that God is not forsaken yes, you, yes, that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, and that whosoever shall just believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, God also said that the Lord Jesus Christ, that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, the abundant life, it comes by way of the riches that God has put deep down yes, in our souls. Yes, yes, this sir. whole process, it begins simply with our surrender, where we say, what shall I render yes, but my sir. surrender? Yes, what shall I give unto the Lord? Well, God is just simply asking if we would just simply say, yes, Lord, and, yes. and just give up uh, uh, all of ourselves yes, and just uh, uh, live our lives for him, you 
see, God wants simply for us to just repent and then, hallelujah, uh, then give our lives, our hearts, our souls, our minds, our, our families, our children, our, our schools, hallelujah, our government, our county, our city, hallelujah, what's happening in our hearts and our homes. God just wants us to just uh, surrender all of our problems. Yes, you see, the Bible is very clear and where it says, hallelujah, that we can cast all oh. of our cares oh. upon the Lord yes, because sir. he is the one who cares for us. Yes, you see, all of it begins when we simply just say yes, Lord, yes, when we say hallelujah. Yes, I want to operate in the fullness of, of all of the, the gifts and the riches yes, and all of the glory yes, that yes, God has put on the inside of us. You see, God, hallelujah, has given us the presence yes, of the Holy Spirit in us uh, where we can walk in uh, the fullness of love and joy and, and peace that surpasses yes, uh, all understanding where we can wake up uh, and have peace on our minds and yes. then we can sit down and still have peace uh, on our minds where we yes. can uh, go to sleep uh, and you, still have the Thank peace uh, that surpasses all understanding uh, where we can sleep through the night. Uh, I said sleep all the way yes. through the night, hallelujah, where we're not tossing and turning and, and hallelujah and, and wrestling and, and all confused because of, of what we've got going on in our lives. We've got a God who has put his presence in us so that we can have a day of Wakanda, a Wakanda forever, where we can hallelujah, walk with him now and receive the fullness of the abundant life that he has made available. And not just the abundant life, but the eternal life, where we can live with him in eternity. And now, henceforth, and forevermore, right. where we can walk with him and yes. talk with him. For the Bible says, hallelujah, when we are draw closer to him, then he will draw closer to yes. us. Yes. We, we've got a God who wants us to draw closer yes. so that we can receive the fullness of everything yes. that he's made available in his word to yes. us. I stop by right here today to ask you, hallelujah, where is your Wakanda right. and who is your king? Who is hallelujah. Your king? The king of kings yes. and the Lord of lords. Yes. Hallelujah. The bright and the morning star. Yes. Hallelujah. The lily of the valley. Yes. Hallelujah. The first and the last. The beginning and yes. the end. I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. Yes. The one who died on the cross yes. and was raised for yes. you and me so yes. you and I can have the right to the yes. tree of life. Yes. And I'll yes. stop by here today to yes. ask you a question one more time. Uh, one more again. Where is your Wakanda? And who is your king? Amen. Yes.